Did you know that anatomically modern humans originated in Africa and migrated to other parts of the world around 60,000 to 70,000 years ago? Did you also know that early humans interbred with Neanderthals in Europe and Asia? Do you know how humans stumbled upon this information? All thanks to genomic studies. DNAs are exciting little databases that carry information about each of our genetic pasts. It tells tales of where our ancestors lived, what they looked like and how they adapted to their surroundings. It's like a genetic history book. Studying this data would reveal a lot of things about a single person and also an entire community. A recent study conducted by a team of researchers in Hyderabad exploring the history of Indian populations claims there is no distinct divide in the genetic history of North and South Indians. This study was published by the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad. In this study, the scientists found that the traditional warrior and feudal lords of Nairs, Tiyas and Elavas from Kerala and Bans and Hoysalas from Karnataka in the south were genetically closer to populations of Northwest India. This may make them closer to Gujar populations who are found largely spread out across the north from Jammu to Maharashtra or the agricultural Kamboj community who are from the Punjab region of India and Pakistan. The study suggests that these groups not only share ancestors with ancient migrants from northwest India but also have some genetic traits in common with people from Iran. Earlier, some historians believed that these Kerala communities had a connection to Ahichatra, which is an ancient city in the Gangetic Plain. Others thought they were linked to a group called the indo scythians from northwest India. Now, because of this study, it is proven that they are more like relatives to people from northwest India. These results show that in the last 4,000 or 5,000 years, the north and south populations of India have migrated, mingled and shared genetic history. So, there is no distinct divide between north and south India in terms of their genetic history. Does this mean these south populations are not completely Dravidian? I spoke to K. Tangaraj who belonged to the group that undertook the study and this is what he said. If you use Indian population, and use uh, European or Chinese or any other uh, population outside India. You can distinctly see the population from outside India is in a different cluster. Whereas if you look at uh, Indians, uh, you don't see very distinct cluster. Whereas you see there's a gradient of cluster. That means every individual in India shares some proportion of if the population from south, they will have some proportion of genetic information from the north. Same way, if you go to north, they might have large proportion of genetic component of north Indian population, might have small proportion of south Indians. So we all mixed during the last few thousand years back. So there is no distinct division of either south or north. The CCMB team is interested in the southwest coast of India because this region has a lot of different genes and cultures. Over many years, people have moved, settled and mixed, creating a diverse genetic and cultural history. In a previous study, researchers discovered that migrations of Jews, Parsis and Roman Catholics have contributed to the rich genetic heritage of this area. Their most recent study on Nairs, Tiyas and Ilavas from Kerala and Bans and Hoysalas from Karnataka started three years ago. Scientists studied the DNA of 213 people from ancient warrior and lord communities in southwest India. They checked specific markers in their genes and compared their results with ancient and contemporary Eurasian populations ranging from the Bronze Age to present day groups. If you are wondering what's the point of this study, Tangaraj has an answer for that too. Not only the Population study helps us in understanding the history of the population, but also helps us in understanding the disease aspect of the population and try to help the population by screening the entire population and giving appropriate counseling.
According to the author of the study, Dr. Lomas Kumar, the migration of these groups happened from northwest via central India to the southwest during the late Bronze Age or probably Iron Age. They likely travelled through Godavari Basin to reach Karnataka and Kerala. The study group also mentioned that when looking at the genetic information from the mother's side in South Indian populations, it showed more similarities with people from West Eurasia. This suggests that a lot of the movement or migration was led by females, which is different from some other groups that came to India a few hundred years ago, like the Siddhis who are mostly males and came from Africa. While researching for this story, I read a 2022 Harvard Magazine article that said, genetically, race is a broken concept because every population is a mixture of other populations which are themselves mixtures of still earlier populations. For example, in the past 10,000 years, Britain has seen five significant waves of migration. In three of these waves, almost the entire native population was replaced. India is a country that has been subjected to many migrations too. Native residents of Andaman are the first humans to migrate out of Africa 65,000 years ago. So a country like India, which has so much revolving around race, should let go of the notion of fixed and pure racial identities as it is evident that the complex history of migrations in India has shaped the diverse population we see today. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.